when I first thought of these ideas, I could see that to pursue these would mean going beyond the pale of conventional science. And when I discussed it with friends, uh, some of them told me that I should definitely not publish these ideas or even talk about them, that I should continue along the straight and narrow path which would lead me to a professorship and perhaps to a fellowship at the Royal Society and that kind of thing. Um, and then if I really was still interested in these things, when I retired, perhaps write a short monograph about them. This was the advice that was given to me. Um, and this is the advice that many scientists follow. It's amazing how many scientists, when they've got Nobel Prizes, or when they've retired, or when they've got FRSs, or when they've got all three together, um, start putting forward uh, rather unconventional views. And it turns out they've held these views for years, but have never dared to say them. Well, I think science is about exploring new ways of looking, not to have areas of debate suppressed by just fear. So I preferred to take the very risky course of publishing my book and pursuing this line of research, realizing that this would involve striking out on my own. But I preferred to do this, to staying within the institutional framework, paying lip service to an orthodoxy in which I no longer believed. Um, I suppose people had the same choice in Russia under Brezhnev. I mean, did you pretend that you were a good communist? And or did you become a dissident and risk uh, all that that implied? Well, I thought that I'd rather be a dissident. His immodestly titled book, A New Science of Life, was the result. It was sent for review to the journal Nature, widely regarded as the world's most influential science magazine. The book was read by Nature's editor-in-chief, John Maddox, who denounced it in a dramatic editorial and in terms that echoed the medieval church's condemnation of religious heretics. I was so offended by it that I said that while it's wrong that books should be burned, uh, in practice, if book burning were allowed, this book would be a candidate. I think it's dangerous that people should be allowed by our liberal societies to put that kind of nonsense into currency. It's unnecessary uh, to introduce magic into the explanation of um, uh, physical and biological phenomena, when in fact uh, there's every likelihood that the continuation of research as it's now practiced will indeed fill all the gaps that Sheldrake draws attention to. You see, Sheldrake's is not a scientific theory. Sheldrake uh, is putting forward magic instead of science. And um, that can be condemned in exactly the language that the popes used to con condemn Galileo. And um, uh, for the same reasons, it is heresy.